Hi everyone, how are you all doing? It's that time of the week again, Thursday tutorial time. Welcome to you all. I'm just going to wait for you all to hop on. But as always, don't forget, give me a thumbs up. Do pop me a note in the comments so I know you were present with me as well. Okay. What we're doing tonight is we're going to do some patterned kimimo and we're going to combine something else with this and we're going to actually look at how to do the cone ends with it instead of the glue ends as well okay now i always recommend using the smaller boards the reason why i think smaller boards are really nice is because there's less wastage it's exactly the same the only difference is perhaps you might prefer the feel of a bigger one. Personally, the distance from there to there is far less. So I think from a wastage point of view, there's far less. Much better to have two boards if you're going to be doing beaded kumihimo as well. Now, I ran a workshop. This is going back quite a few years ago now. And I could not understand why nobody's beaded kumihimo was working it was like a saggy pair of tights and i'm thinking well i'm teaching it right they're doing the right moves what is happening what was happening was i had given them all boards that had been pre-used boards that had been used with the rat tail and been stretched so what actually happens if you're using beaded kumihimo and you slot them in Basically, they don't keep their tension because you've stretched them. So pop a little mark. If you've still got the middle bit, keep the middle bit and write what you use that board for because it really isn't that easy to see visually. Okay, it looks really busy, but don't be frightened because it really is quite simple. Now, it was also another learning curve for me because I found that one and a half millimetre thick doesn't fit the standard cone ends we're going to incorporate the head pin at the start and the head pin at the end as well but that's basically what happens so you have it all spread round now we're going to use 18 strands 16 not 18 sorry and i think the easiest way to think of it is that to cut them all at 35 centimeters or thereabouts you might need to adjust a little bit in terms of your wrist size but you've got quite a big portion of inches between the cone ends and the clasp you will need 13 35 centimeter strands of your dominant color okay and then you will need three strands of your heart colour. Got all of the strands of the same length. And then with the tag tie, now I've got some of the tag ties in the group. You can always use wire, a fine wire if you want to. Do you know what? It, it really is worth just taking your time at the start. With your tag tie is wrap the tag tie round all of these and get it as tight as you can because you know what I found was when I was putting it on the board every time I pulled it one of the threads would come out and I'd have to start again I'm going to show you how you set this up on the board and I'm going to show you how you do the weave so I'm going to pop all of those strands in the middle and this is how we're going to do it. So we're going to put two dominant colours by the side of the first dot. Sometimes it might be a little bit of playing around with pulling out some of these strands so that they lie properly. I'm going to do two here and I'm going to do two in between. Notice that I'm only working with my dominant colours at the moment. I'm going to put three coloured ones, different coloured ones, out of the way. And I am going to pop 
two by the side of the other dot here and I'll be perfectly honest with you it doesn't have to be perfectly spaced I've got two two in between okay on that one but sometimes the boards are slightly different so it doesn't really matter what number you've got in now on this one this side I've got my heart color so in between I've got two of the blue dark blue so let me pop it all on there and I'll just brief you on it so try and get I'm just going to switch those over it doesn't matter too much if they're twisted but obviously if you can avoid it if it sits a bit better which is why I'm just organizing it it just reduces the amount of bulk that's actually in the ends okay let's talk you through that so we have like in the basic Kumihimo you've got your north east south and west covered so one two and three north south east are in your dominant color and then in between you've got a group so you've got blue in the first group or your dominant color dominant color in between the second one dominant color between the third now in the fourth north east south west you've got your two colors for the heart and then on the last one you've got heart color and your dominant color so i'm just going to hold that up for a moment so basically if you've got this and you're watching back you can have a good old look at that so you've got one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen strands okay now i'm gonna actually try and do it this way so that you can see what i'm doing now this is the same way as we did last time so we do start at the north top right to bottom right bottom left to top left okay now normally you do a quarter turn but what you do is you turn to the next group and you work the same top right to bottom right bottom left to top left turn to the next group of threads and I'm turning anti-clockwise top right to bottom right bottom left to top left now don't worry about where your threads are so next group top right to bottom right so what you're doing is you're working the group of threads with the group that are immediately opposite so to these so it's this one and this one top right to bottom right bottom left to top left so notice that it's moving all the way around the board they're mixing up so you know you don't worry about where they are get stuck just look at where your threads are positioned if you're having a break pop something like that so you know that's your next move or perhaps bring one down to the bottom so that you know the next one is coming up so you're just rotating the board round to the next group of threads so it really isn't that complicated it's just literally we go to the next one bottom right to top right so top right to bottom right bottom left to top left turn to the next group now I hope you don't mind I'm going to swizzle it round so that I can actually work a little bit easier now the to and fro method won't work with this one if you've missed it have a look at the video from last week you need to follow in the sequence 
Now, there's one thing that I've actually forgotten, but it's not too late, is head pin. Okay, pop your head pin. I should have done this at the start. For this reason, but I was all guns blazing. Right. Do you know what? I might start again. I'll see if it goes in. Ah, oh, no, that's okay. Right, what I should have done, okay, was actually put, if you're doing a cone end, you want to actually push the head pin in at the start like that. Okay, so your head pin's coming out the end. And... It really isn't worth putting it in after you've done all of your weaving because it's really hard. So just literally from the outset, push it down the center and work your weave around it. And you know what? That makes it really stable. I actually used to think, oh, we can do it after. It'd be dead easy. Do you know what? This is so much easier. Just work your threads around the head pin. Now, why the head pin? The head pin is going to go through your cone end at the end um, when we actually add all the components together at the end. Now, you don't need too much of it sticking out. You can always push it down a little bit if you want to because you'll cut off the excess. But you just need enough to be caught in to the Kumihimo braiding. Maybe half a centimetre, if you can. Eventually, it will just disappear into the weave and you won't even notice it. Nearly come to the end of the head pin. So the head pin stays part way through. Now, the other thing I was thinking with cone ends, there's a, a tool called Cone Tastic. Now, if you're a wire worker, there's a chance that you A might have seen it or B, you might have one. I haven't got the Cone Tastic. I've got one of the equivalents that's um, been made by Beadalon or something, but it does the same thing. And you can actually make your own cone ends through. Uh, with wire so I, I couldn't find I think my cone end tool is in the shed if you want me to show it to you let me know and what I'll do is I'll post a pic or just do a little mini demo and put it online so it might be something that might be of interest to you just bear in mind that the thicker the threads the bigger the cone end you're going to need Equally, you can use a glue end if you wish. And when you're doing the length of this, take into account the length of your cone ends, the beads that you're adding at the end, and also take into account so the clasps and all the beads and findings. Now, let's just turn over. Now you can stretch it, and I don't know if you can see, but it's coming along quite nicely. So let's just do a little bit more, and then what we're going to do is switch to the other piece that I've already done, and I'll show you how to do the end bit. So hopefully that all makes sense. You know, don't be put off by the amount of strands. And like I say, I've given you the length as a guide, but you might find you need to alter that length a little bit as well. Right, OK, so I'm going to just bank that for now. Stretch that. OK. So that's where we're at. So let 
let's move on to this one so what i'm going to show you is okay so we're coming near the end how are we going to incorporate the head pin in you need the head pin the other way so you actually need the head pin to actually go in this way so what you do is you just rest the head pin in there and you just start weaving around it now i'm glad i did three at the bottom because i couldn't remember where i was so you carry on doing your weave around the head pin and that's how you basically incorporate the head pin in the ends which then will allow you to have a loop that comes through your cone end and it really is quite amazing at how just resting it on there and actually doing your weave So you see how sturdy that is. I'm just going to do a little bit more. Now, this is when I discovered, obviously, like I say, that 1.5 mil and 2 mil is makes the standard cone ends won't fit. Um, so you're really looking at one millimeter thick for standard cone ends. Now, the 10 millimetre ones, the new cone ends that I've put online, will fit this one. Okay, so that's pretty sturdy. There we go. So that's your head pin in there. Now, before we take it off the board, I'm just going to get two opposite ones and tie them together as a temporary knot just until I've done a bit of weaving in the sense of binding. So I'm going to take these off. And obviously you can stretch this a little bit as well. Now I've already done the binding on one end. This end I'm going to show you how to do it. Now just cotton or Nymo, Eslon, that will do just fine. So I've actually cut a length, probably about 15 centimetres. I've got halved it, so I've got a loop. So loop in the middle. I'm going to bring both ends through the loop and then I'm going to bring it up right up to the edge. And I'm going to tie another overhand knot on there and then I'm going to bind it with one of the sides so I'm just going to wrap around it. It really is important to take your time with the end bit because it will make your life so much easier. If it snaps, don't worry, just get another piece and start again. The main thing is the fact that you've got your temporary knot on the end, so it doesn't matter. So I'm going to do this a couple of times. I'm running out of thread on the one side. Now, if you're worried it's going to come undone, you can always paint your knot with nail varnish. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to undo that temporary knot. Right, I hope you're still there. Let's have a look. Now, I've got lots of scraps. Keep your scraps for doing some tassels. Okay, so this is the one end. Now I'm just going to trim. 
just check that they work before you glue and then what I would recommend is that you actually pop some E6000 glue on the end here um, and really just in case anything comes undone you know that you've made it nice and secure pop the glue on the ends and I pop it a little bit on that thread as well and then I'm going to pop the end on there now you you see you can see some of that thread we can cut that off after if we need to or you can color it in with a felt tip if it's a bit bright is I'm going to actually put a few beads on the end as well I've got some cute little amethyst beads I've got some cute little hearts as well I'm going to turn it at a right angle so what I've got is the ends and my beads you don't even have to add extra beads if you don't want to but to be honest I just think it adds a nice extra element to it and then with your round nose pliers you turn a loop okay now so that's where we're at at the moment now let me just quickly show you some of the now I'm just going to show you how to attach the clasps so you could either open this up the loop that you've just made like so and attach the clasp or you can attach it with a jump ring and then just return that back now you can even use this loop for the clasp as well so if you don't want it sort of too bulky you can use that sort of loop that end as well now that is actually quite a nice size it matches my dress which is a bonus isn't it i feel like i'm down here like this bear with me let's put you in the right spot shall we let's go and have a look at tassels shall we it... now these tiny little ends you can either use these with beaded kumihimo or you can use them with the tassel ends now i'm not going to need a great deal i've only really got some little some of my little ends there's really not that much there you do it whatever width you like bend them in half and then get yourself some thread i've got the thread i've got it at the halfway point like so and i'm just gonna pop the halfway point there if i can bring your ends together and pop your ends through the loop pull that tight and then bind it like you did with the other one all right so that's all i've got at the moment so i'm gonna you can either paint those tails with nail varnish if you're worried that they're gonna um come undone you've been drooping a lot <laughs> you know what it's just going so pear-shaped tonight <laughs> you'll be in my lap in a minute <laughs> so that's what we've got okay just make sure they fit into the ends now you can use cone ends for this as well if you want to grab a little bit of glue and pop it in the ends and I'm going to squeeze that and put that in there like so i'm actually going to cut off the binding thread afterwards now if you wanted let's just show you another method right so this is the other way of doing it is actually half the threads okay and form a loop and bring the loop over those threads can you see that so I've just got half and half 
I've got three strands halved. The other thing you could always do is use an eye pin, but I think you'll find the eye pin is a little bit too small, the hole. So I've made my own eye pin. And then I'm actually going to pop that through the cone end. There's no binding required. And we're going to do it like we did the glue, um, like we did the ends. So you cut the centimetre off. And turn a loop. So there you've got a dead simple one. I wouldn't have it that long. I'd make it a lot shorter. So there you go. There you go, look. So you've got tassel. You've got amethyst. You've got hearts. And that's just a nice little accentuation. Again, thank you for bearing with us. You guys take care. Take care. Bye.